Bless our greetings and welcome once again. Walk with Jesus from eternity to eternity. Before we enter into our meditation, shall we bow on our heads and look unto the Lord. Gracious Father, once again we come to your awesome presence. We thank you and bless you. Holy name of God, Father, for this wonderful evening. Thank you, God, for you have enabled us to be counted, God, Father, among the living. Once again, we are grateful unto you. We are, God, Father, Lord. Bless you, Master Lord, with your righteous hands so that we can see another day in our blessed life, O God Father. It's by your mercy, God Father, and by your grace that we could see, God Father, the blessedness of your mighty hand upon us, O God. Father, once again, we surrender everything into your hands. And as we enter into meditation, Lord, we pray for your divine guidance and your Holy Spirit anointing to be there upon us, O God. As we are exploring your word and walking with Jesus, Master, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, let your divine wisdom come upon us and Lord, help us so that we can walk closely with you, Master. Father, once again, thank you for all the things that you have done in our lives, O God, for our physical life, O God, Father, and even for our spiritual life, too. We bless your holy name and we look unto you, Master, for your writing. Guide us and lead us. Bless us with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So as Jesus was baptizing at the same time John was also baptizing. John the Baptist was baptizing. So the Pharisees came and then they were inquiring like Jesus is baptizing more in number than John. So we have seen that Jesus withdrew himself from that place. There are two reasons for Jesus to withdraw himself from that place and move to Capernaum. The very first reason is Jesus doesn't want to be a competitor and let not the people think that there's a competition between John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. Jesus has endorsed the, the Baptist. He has given entire reverence for him. All the due honor that is to be given to John the Baptist, he came. And then he, he accepts, he accepts the ministry of John because this ministry is not of John. This is of God, his father. God, the father who sent John the Baptist before Jesus Christ and the ministry belongs to God. Whatever we do here for the glory of God that is given by God for us and it is for God. The purpose is of God and the purpose is for God. So we, we see here the ministry that Jesus Christ has taken, the John the Baptist has taken, Jesus has accepted it and he has endorsed about this. So let's move ahead. The first reason is Jesus does want to be a competitor. And the second reason is John the Baptist is being put into the prisons. Now let's see this and then move ahead. We move to Matthew chapter 4 verses 12. Now when Jesus heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew into Galilee and leaving Nazareth, he came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the region of Jebulun and Naphtali. This, is, this was to fulfill that that was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, the land of Jebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who were sitting in darkness saw a great light, and those who were sitting in the land and shadow of death upon them a light dawn. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So we see here, John the Baptist is been put into prison and Jesus withdraws himself from that place and he moves to Galilee and he makes his and makes it Capernaum as his, as his working place. So the first reason, the first reason for Jesus to leave Nazareth is because he speaks that the prophet is not honored in his own place. No prophet is honored in his own place. So Jesus, Jesus tries to shift his place and moves to Capernaum and there he preaches and he, he begins his ministry. Okay, now let's move towards another scripture too. We go to Luke chapter 3. We go to Luke chapter 3 and we see verse 18 and 19 or verse. So with many other exhortations he preached the gospel to the people. But when Herod the Tetrarch was reprimanded by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the wicked things which Herod had done, 
Herod also added this to them all. He locked John up in prison. He's been imprisoned. John, John is a, we, we call him as a daring man. John is a so bold man, a bold servant of God, who never shines away to speak the truth. If he sees anything wrong, he speaks it out. So we mean to say like he wears his heart on his sleeves. The man that cannot tolerate, the man that cannot tolerate sin, the man that cannot tolerate any wrong thing, John the Baptist, when he had seen Herod the Tetrarch, Tetrarch means ruler on one part of a ruler on one part of the kingdom. So the kingdom is divided into four parts and on one part this Herod is being seated, he has been enthroned and he has kept his brother's wife as his own wife. And John when he saw this, he moved, his, the truth out of his mind, his heart moves out and he says, what you're doing is wrong. This is not for right for you to keep your brother's wife as your wife. And because of this, he became angry and he puts John into the prison. So the two reasons are there. One reason is John is put into the prison. And the second reason is Jesus doesn't want to be your competitor. Now, as we already discussed yesterday, that the ministry of John has to, has to stop at one go. And the ministry of John must stop, must stop where this is being carried out by his disciples. Now, the disciples asked, the disciples began to baptize. Now, John, earlier he was making disciples. Now, Jesus is making disciples. So, John's disciples, some of the John's disciples have already joined with Jesus. Because John's purpose is to bring people to Lord Jesus Christ. So, he doesn't want to make his own disciples. John's ministry is limited for a very short period. His ministry is limited for a very short period, but his ministry is very crucial and very powerful. Very crucial, very powerful. Not many years John could continue this. Immediately after Jesus comes onto the stage, John departs from there. He is put into the prison and then he has never come out of the prison. We are going to see this. He has been beheaded and later on after some time we are going to see this. So John began the ministry and he began the ministry and he executed the ministry in a powerful way where he preached in a powerful way and people began to accept him. People began to repent and they, they came to the Jordan to be baptized. John was baptizing at the same time. Jesus also came there and his disciples were also there. Jesus was also baptized and then Jesus moves and moves towards Galilee now. John was, is put into the prison. So we are coming back to this part later on after a few days. John is in prison now. Jesus has moved from Judea to Galilee. Judea to Galilee to Galilee. So uh, because this Galilee is a place where this is in the, the tribes of Naphtali and Jebelon. So let's, let's move ahead now. So Jesus had moved there. So John chapter 4 verse 1 or not. So let's go. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were, he left Judea and went away again to Galilee and he had to pass through Samaria now. He had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sikar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. So Jesus being wearied from his journey was sitting thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. So he came to the city of Samaria because he has to pass through Samaria. So he came to that city. Now he is moving towards Galilee. So Galilee is on the Samaria is on the way from way from Judea to between Judea and Galilee. So, okay. So he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sikar near the parcel of ground that J Jacob gave his son Joseph and Jacob's well was there. So Jesus being wearied from his journey, he's tired of his journey. He cannot move ahead. So he said, he, I want to sit here. I want to take rest. So Jesus being weary from his journey was sitting thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. His disciples went into villages so that they can fetch out some food for themselves and for their master too. 
So Jesus said, I am tired. I am weary now. I cannot move. Now, not many occasions we see this. Not many occasions we see Jesus saying that I am tired or I have to sleep. In one instance, we see Jesus, Jesus went into the boat and he slept. Now, on the cross, he cried out saying that I am thirsty. Now, here we see Jesus where, apart from the we never see him, he works tirelessly. He works tirelessly day and night. He moves with the crowds throughout the day and he teaches his disciples throughout the night and he spends a time in prayer too. But here at the city, at the city of Sikar, uh, as a Samaria, a place called Sikar, Jesus sat down. Jesus sat down because there was a purpose for him. Sometimes you may feel that you are tired or you are weak or you, are, you cannot move ahead. Many a times you want to do something, you want to do something bigger, something greater, but so many obstacles come and you cannot move ahead. Many times you think there's an obstacle and you can do that. But God has a purpose for that too. Every hindrance has got a purpose. If you wait there, if you wait there at the hindrance and think upon it, God teaches lessons and the situation teaches you so many lessons. So every obstacle, every pain, every suffering, every hardship, every opposition, every hindrance has got some lesson to teach and some work to be done there. So we see here Jesus being weary. He's got tired. He's got tired and he has a purpose. And because he was tired and he was sitting at the well. And when he was seated at the well, his, 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 his stopping at this place doesn't go vain, doesn't go in vain. We see Jesus meeting with a woman here now. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sikar and then near the pass on the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, being where one journey was sitting thus by the well, it was about six hour. Now verse 7, we move to verse 7. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Jesus said to that woman, a woman came from Samaria. She came and Jesus asked her, can you give me some water? Now his disciples were not there. They went to the city to buy some food. There was a Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you being a Jew, Ask me for a drink since I am a Samaritan woman. As we mentioned earlier, a woman who is instrumental in breaking historical barriers or historical bounds of separation. Now, she mentions the first wall and the first wall is that you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan. You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan and there is a big wall between you and me between you and me has been there for ages now for centuries now it's not a one day thing it is it's not happened yesterday or it's not just happened few days ago or months ago but centuries ago since centuries you and i your people and our people your nation and our nation doesn't talk to one another we don't have any fellowship so how can you say that now, being a Jew, how can you ask me, a Samaritan, to give me some water? How is that you being a Jew, ask me for a drink since I'm a Samaritan woman? For Jews have, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritan. Jesus' answer is said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now Jesus is asking this woman to recognize. Jesus is asking this woman to recognize, to think now. Let's read that. If you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God, now she doesn't know who Jesus is. But only thing she knew is that he is a Jewish man. He is from Judah. He is the of the clan of Judah. Now she knows that he is a Jewish man. That's it. Now, but Jesus says that if you knew the gift of God, you have to know the gift of God. Now, you, you are a person who is waiting for the gift of God. So, just mean to say that what she's looking unto, what she's been waiting for, what she's been praying for all these days, and all the people of Samaria too, and all the people of Israel too, they're waiting for the Messiah to come. If you knew the gift of God, and the one who sits in front of you, 
if you give him if you ask him to give me a ring he would have given you he would have given you the living waters he would have given you the living water she said to him sir you have nothing to draw and the well is so deep you have nothing to draw and the well is so deep where then do you get living water where do you get the living water she mentions about this well now jesus said i need some water i need some water the reason the first thing is he is so weary he is so tired and the second thing is that he himself can often cannot fetch water because he doesn't have anything to fetch water now she mentions it very clearly and when she says that you're talking about the living water but you have nothing you don't have anything at all how can you give me and this well is so deep this well is so she's thinking that he is going to give something from the same well from the same well she thinking that okay my 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 since jesus i have asked him a question though he is asking me that okay if you know me who i am and i am going to go inside and get you the living waters she said to her sir you have nothing to draw with and the well is so deep where then you get the living water you are not greater than our father jacob are you are you you are not greater than she mentions very beautifully now here see you're not greater than our father jacob now jacob is considered great here so jacob is considered so great that our father jacob are you greater than him tell me who gave us this well this well is been given by jacob to his son joseph this well has been given by jacob to his son joseph are you greater than he so let's go ahead you are not greater than our father jacob are you who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle jacob himself drank of this well this well his his sons do and even the cattle that belongs to jacob was thirsty very jesus answered and said to her everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again everyone who drinks of this water the water not only from this well but from any well will thirst again but whoever drinks of the water that i will give him shall never thirst but the water that i'll give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life but the water that i'm going to give you will become like a well of a well of water springing up to eternal life the water that i'm going to give you that that is going to take you towards eternal life towards eternal life was 15 woman said to him sir give me this water then give me this water immediately she said give me this water so that i will not be able to i, I won't be thirsty nor i need to come here to draw this water again now she is thinking some miracle here the miracle is like she is going to give her some drink and she is going to take it at once and at the what one sip at one sip or at one lot so she her, her thirst is going to be quenched and second thing is that she will not be thirsty again not just for a few hours but she won't be thirsty for again so she she mean to say that give me the water so that i will not be thirsty if i'm not thirsty why should i come here why should i come here so what it means she has got two kinds of wells so two kinds of waters for her purpose the one purpose that can be served is maybe that well or that spring that is there closer to her house now this is the second one this is the second one where she is coming to fetch water and this water the well is so good and the water is so good that she can she travels a lot of distance and then carries this water now this water is used for the drinking purpose or the water may be used for another purpose so what she is saying that if my thirst is been quenched once you give me this water i won't come here i won't come here we, we water is simply is water is not simply needed for drinking but what is needed in our day to day life for so many reasons so many hundreds of reasons now let's move ahead now verse 16 he said to her go call your husband and come here now very very strange this this seems to be very strange this is this is begin with the water now she speaks about the historical walls and jesus saying that okay let it be but let's go to the waters now let's discuss about the water now when the discussion of water is going on and she is speaking something else now jesus said 
he shifted the total entirely the subject and he said the first you go call your husband and come call your husband and then come in verse 17 the woman answered and said i have no husband very straightly i have no husband now as if you know like jesus doesn't know anything she spoke so bluntly because she does she has not yet recognized who he is she spoke so bluntly i have no husband jesus said to her you have correct you have correctly said i have no husband for you have had five husbands you don't have now you have already had five husbands and the one whom you have now and the one whom you have now is not your husband the one you have now is not your husband what does that mean does it belong to someone else you said it right i don't have a husband as one was 19 The woman said to her, "Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet." Now this is very strange. This is very strange because he spoke something a secret. This is a secret. This is maybe this is hidden from so many people. We don't know. She says, "I perceive that you are a prophet." Now she started to think. Now she started to think. This is what Jesus was trying all this time. this was he was trying all this time in the beginning itself he said if you knew the gift of god if you have started thinking now she began to think and she said in my thinking i perceive that you are a prophet but our fathers worshiped in this mountain and you people say that in jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship our fathers this is not about her she says because women are not entitled to enter into the worship place our father worship our fathers worshiped in this in this mountain on this mountain but you people you people from judaea you what would you say like you people say that you shall go to jerusalem all the men must go to jerusalem and worship there you worship what you do not jesus speaking to her now okay jesus said to her jesus said to her woman believe me an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in jerusalem will you worship the father an hour is coming where you will not worship here on this mountain and neither are you going to worship the father in jerusalem you worship what you do not know we worship what we know jesus speaks with speaks very clearly you worship what you do not know you do not know but you still worship you don't know about the father you don't know about his scriptures purely but you still worship what i tell you you worship what you do not know we worship what we know for salvation is from the jews there is no doubt in this there is no doubt in this because all the prophecies about the coming messiah they will be prophesied by the prophets that he would be taking birth in the family of david in the clan of juda now there's no doubt so the salvation is going to come from the jewish people there's no doubt in this because jesus is a jew he is born in the clan of juda yeah in the family of david but an hour is coming now and now is not only coming but is when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth when the true worshipers will worship the father in the spirit and in truth let's see this beautiful fact here and the fact is none of the disciples of jesus christ not the disciples of john the baptist came to this point of worship came to this point of worship now we see one one in one stage one instance where the disciples of jesus come to him and say master john has taught his disciples how to pray now tell us also teach us also how to pray how to pray it might be surprising for you 
but the fact is disciples of jesus came almost at the end of the three years walk with jesus requesting to teach them to pray though we see this in the book of matthew in the, in the beginning itself in the in the chapter 66 chapter but this happens after almost at the end of the three years of the ministry for three long years the disciples of jesus christ were walking with him they saw him praying in every instance jesus prayed he he took them along and he prayed and he he prayed alone also so disciples were witnessing christ and everything he gives glory to to the father before the event he prays and during the event and even after the event he prays but when they are asking now it's long now okay we are going to do deal with this topic uh, uh, separately now let me just why i'm mentioning this because she's come to a point she has come to a point where she is ready to worship in truth and in spirit jesus never speaks anything untimely never does he do anything untimely he even speaks about his departure to his disciples saying that all this while i wanted to speak but you cannot perceive this so I have waited for you. I have waited for you so that you can come to this understanding where you people can perceive, you people can recognize the things of above and then I can disclose the truths of heaven to you. Now speaking to this woman, he says that the time of worship has come and the worship that is not going to take place on this mountain nor, or, nor in, the, in the temple of Jerusalem nor in the temple of jerusalem you're not going to worship my father there you're not going to worship your god the father there where are you going to worship where are you going to worship the time is coming he says and immediately he shifts his sentences and then he speaks that okay the tense of the sentence he says that it's not in the future in fact it is now has already come has already come she has perceived how to worship the lord now she is very instrumental here samaritan woman is very so jesus never does anything untimely or god never does anything untimely nor does he speak anything untimely even he speaks or we feel like it is untimely and that is a prophecy that is a prophecy that's going to happen we can we cannot understand we see them as mysteries we see them as mysteries even it's difficult for people to understand if you know the times and the will and the purpose and the heart of god there's nothing a mystery everything is revealed everything is revealed so god never does anything untimely nor does he speak anything untimely so if you speak centuries we are going to see that too we're going to see Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Since there was a network error, apologies once again. So, this we are going to take, this we are going to see happening after a few decades, few decades. We see uh, in AD 70, the temple in Jerusalem is destroyed. Now, Jesus is saying that the place of worship is going to be shifted. Now, you people give so much of importance to the place. It's okay. But most important thing is you need to worship in your heart, in your spirit and in your truth. So he says that now these worship places are going to be shifted. Now those days only people and then worship there. Now God has given us the privilege where we can worship anywhere, anywhere and anytime anytime god has god has given us the access into his into his presence before his throne of grace anytime we can go we can directly go we do not require a mediator here now it doesn't mean that we don't require shepherds or we don't require our teachers we don't require our pastors or our mentors we have the access everyone has the access now you don't require a priest to carry your sacrifices you can take your care sacrifice you can carry your sacrifices by yourself and god has given you the access into his into his presence okay now see so you worship what you do not know 
we worship what we know for salvation is from the jews but an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers he doesn't mean to say all worshipers god never speaks god never speaks bluntly or blindly his every word is very important he says the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth for such people the father seeks to be his worshipers for such people the father seeks to be his worshipper father seeks worshipers and he, his worshipers must be true his worshipers must be true it's not worship in truth or worship in spirit but his worshipers must be true people they are true inside and out they are true inside and out we may be true outside but not be inside we may be appearing clean outside but not clean inside we may be appearing righteous outside but not righteous inside we may be appearing holy outside but not holy inside the lord is not looking for such worshipers lord is looking for such people who are right to holy inside and outside to right inside and outside to clean outside and inside to he's looking at such people and he says that father is so seeking for the people who worship him in truth and in spirit but the worshipers must be true worshipers god is spirit was 24 god is spirit and those people must worship in truth and in spirit the woman said to him I know that Messiah is coming who is called Jesus when that one comes he will declare all things to us Now she says I know about Messiah we are waiting for Messiah and we are waiting for him and we also know that when he comes he will declare all these things to us Now we are waiting for him Jesus said to her I who speak to you am he I who speak to you am he Jesus said to her the one who is speaking to you is the messiah the one whom you are waiting for the one who your forefathers have worshiped and waited for all these generations have been waiting for the messiah i am the messiah now let's conclude here let's conclude here now jesus moved from judea to galilee area and he came to a city of samaria that's called sikar and jesus was tired very uh, he, he 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 was uh, totally wearied of his journey and then he cannot move ahead so he told his disciples to go into the city and fetch some food seated there while he was seated there and waiting a woman came from the other side of the city other side of the city that is called samaria and the discussion takes place between them the discussion begins with water now jesus shifts his uh, discussion towards her husband where i perceive that you are a prophet then immediately the discussion moves towards worship and he speaks about the worship and the place of worship and how the father seeks the worship and now he he speaks to her about who the messiah is and the salvation salvation does not come from samaria they were waiting that jesus will be born in samaria but jesus is already born in judaea jesus is born in the bethlehem of judaea in the clan of uh, david in the family of david now he says salvation comes from the jews so there's no doubt in this now let's talk about worship so they speak about the worship she says that our fathers worshiped here on this mountain but you people say everyone had to go to jerusalem now he speaks that an hour is coming but i say the hour has already come that already is come that the place of worship is going to shift it and the place is going to shift from this physical world inside your heart that in your spirit and in truth and you must be a true person a true worshiper to do this one so this is the discussion that has been taking place now we are going to see how she breaks the historical walls that have been raised few centuries ago and how jewish people and samaritan doesn't meet one another 
doesn't have fellowship with one another, doesn't have anything with each other. And but how Jesus and this woman, one particular person, breaks all the barriers. We're going to continue this tomorrow. Let's bow down our heads and we pray. Gracious Father, we come to your awesome presence and we thank you and praise you for this night. Thank you for the living waters, Lord, that you have sent for us tonight. We pray that in the name of Jesus, let these living waters be given to us. Let everyone draw, God, Father, Lord, the living waters and drink of it, God, Father. And then, Lord, a well of spring, God, Father, Lord, flow from them, which gives them eternal life. Father, we pray for, we pray for every person, Lord, who is not yet saved and who is listening to this word. In mighty Jesus' name, we pray that let his salvation shine upon them, O God, Father. And I will know that, Lord, they acknowledge, O God, Father, the saving knowledge of Christ right now. Confess their sins, O God, Father. Take, O God, Father, Lord, your word, O God, Father, Lord, and obey to your word and must, O God, Father, Lord, walk in the path that is set before them, Lord. And I will every person, O God, Father, Lord, who is listening to this word tonight. We pray for you, divine mercies to go with them. If anyone is suffering for any reason, any trouble or any pain, O God, Father, any need, any lack is there. We pray in the name of Jesus. Let your Lord merciful and compassionate heart move in them and provide all their needs and requirements, O God, Father. Touch every body, every soul, O God, Father, Lord. Right now, God, Father, at this moment, we pray for your mighty heavenly blessings to be there upon each and every one. If a son's coming, Terry, help us, Lord, once again to come together and to glorify your name. Otherwise, Lord, bless us there in your son's coming, God. Once again, we thank you, Master, for answering to our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for being here. We'll meet tomorrow night again, 7 p.m. Walk with Jesus, eternity to eternity. God bless you. Good night.